Marvel Comics Ultimate Universe 2.0 revamp under Jonathan Hickman is chugging along and still very popular, not taking anything away from it, losing a little bit of the shine for me as a fan. Still enjoying Ultimate Spider-Man to a degree, think it's a little bit too much of a slow burn. We haven't seen Peter Parker Spider-Man have a victory yet. You know, he was uh, basically punked by Shocker. The only other real battle that we got was with Kingpin, and he was almost murdered. And we are 67% of the way through the first year. He should probably win something. Ultimate X-Men is not an X-Men comic book, really at all in any way, shape, or form. Um, so I kind of fell off of that one. Ultimate Black Panther has been even more of a, like, milk toast slow burn than Ultimate Spider-Man, where it's just kind of Black Panther, but not doing anything all that interesting. And then you do have the Ultimates, which I had a hoot with. Issue number three was lots of fun. And I'll give Dennis Camp this. At least he's doing a bunch of really weird, random, nonsensical things. So there is that level of excitement that he's going to do something that probably undermines the Avengers, but it could, could be interesting. You could get a laugh out of it, like I did with Ultimate Stubber 3, and that's all leading up to a big confrontation, I guess, with Ultimate Hulk. We'll get to that. But first, we do have the introduction of the Ultimate Sinister Six that happened last week and the implications of that with the Ultimate Felicia Hardy, maybe not Black Cat. Confusing, huh? But we got some Ultimate Universe updates here for you today from Marvel Comics. I know a lot of people are enjoying this universe. Ultimate Spider-Man number eight ramps up the drama for Peter Parker with the introduction of the new Ultimate Sinister Six. It all starts with none other than Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin, who is shaping up to be the new Ultimate Spidey's first true arch enemy, right down to founding the new Ultimate Sinister Six. From Queens, there's Mr. Negative, who seems to have a very similar origin as the mainstream Marvel Universe version. In the Bronx, Walter Hardy, the elder black cat and father of Felicia Hardy. Then there's Craven the Hunter, an unparalleled stalker and killer who is exiled from Russia, who sits atop the criminal underworld of Staten Island. And finally, Mysterio is the boss of Brooklyn, whose secrets are a mystery even to Kingpin. You may notice that's only five, since New York only has five boroughs. As the sixth member, there's the Mole Man, who claims all of New York's sewers, subways, and subterranean spaces as his territory. So there you go. There's the big sinister six. And I think it's perfectly fine. You know, I'm not deviating too much. Obviously, the biggest deviation is with Ultimate Black Cat being... Felicia Hardy's father rather than being Felicia Hardy yourself. The the character I think that's most interesting probably, and he's not really even a Spider-Man villain, is Mole Man. You know, he's typically Fantastic Four villain. In fact, I think he was the very first Fantastic Four villain, if I remember correctly, and he's got a pretty wild nut so design on him. And he almost reminds me of the Lawrence Fishburne kind of character in John Wick, where he's the guy that controls the underground and all that stuff. When it turns out that he's far more powerful than you could possibly imagine because of all the stuff that he actually has real estate in, all the stuff that he has the ability to manipulate and all those things, and he can kind of move freely around the city without anybody even knowing it. So I thought that was a cool concept in John Wick. I don't know that it's totally been lifted and thrown into Mole Man, but it did give me those vibes, which I think is a cool thing because I did think that was one of the neat things about the John Wick universe and all the things that are in there. But there are your Sinister Six. They debuted this week. Ultimate Spider-Man number eight w was fine. It wasn't something we mentioned in Best of the Week because I do think it's really just kind of fallen off. And it's just really exposition heavy. And it's been that way for quite some time. And I, I appreciate exposition. I appreciate explaining certain aspects of the universe and what's different here and there. But sometimes you got to show it. You know what I mean? And, you know, when we meet these characters with the descriptions of who they are and what Kingpin knows, it's all verbatim, like right out of the mouth of Wesley, who is telling Kingpin all the stuff he already knows so that we, the reader, know, instead of just kind of figuring it out along the way. Now, one of the big things in there is the new Black Cat, which is leading up to not really a revelation because we kind of already saw it. The Sinister Six will make their first strike in Ultimate Spider-Man 9, which pits Peter Parker and Harry Osborn against Walter Hardy, a burglar known as Black Cat, after he retired as the greatest top floor thief in the world, Hardy used his acquired wealth to consolidate his territory in the Bronx, where he started a family. His wife died, but Hardy has a daughter, presumably Felicia Hardy, who will follow in her father's footsteps as she crosses paths with the ultimate Spider-Man in November's issue number 11. And I do fully anticipate that the new ultimate Black Cat will die, and then Felicia Hardy will obviously will take up the mantle of Black Cat 
which is a character that we're used to seeing under there. And there is a big change to Felicia Hardy, just like the way that she looks. She's half black. And she does seem to have hair very reminiscent of Electra. Like it's pretty huge and wild and out there, and it's very striking. Pretty cool design there. Me personally, um, it's an ultimate universe. Things are supposed to be similar, but not the same. If I'm going to be excited for ultimate Hawkeye being a Native American, I can get behind a very striking, beautiful ultimate Felicia Hardy. Here's my big issue with ultimate Black Cat in this universe. The reason Black Cat works in the Marvel 616 and really the purpose of the character is to be a femme fatale and a character that's so striking and beautiful that Peter is taken aback and is tempted to do things that he normally wouldn't do. Very similar to an electric character for Daredevil, because Peter, while a lot of times he's been in a healthy, steady relationship with you know Gwen Stacy or MJ, a lot of times he's single and kind of out there, and it really makes sense for the character that she would go out there and tempt him and maybe try to abuse those powers, abuse that great power and responsibility, which very much goes against what Peter Parker Spider-Man stands for, and it certainly always worked for Daredevil, but you know that's that's like Daredevil's kryptonite is super duper hot chicks. But in this Ultimate Universe, does Ultimate Black Cat even have a place? Because not only is Peter in a healthy, steady relationship with MJ, it seems to be a very steady, healthy marriage with MJ, and they have multiple children. And I don't see any character, no matter how beautiful, being able to tempt Peter Parker to walk away. Mary Jane is already very beautiful by herself. She's the perfect sidekick to him, the perfect partner for him in marriage. You know, they're raising the kids and they seem very satisfied with each other, very playful together, even after all these years. And it's almost an idyllic type of marriage that he has, almost like with what you have with uh, Clark Kent, Lois Lane, and why that thing works. And that's one of the things I think a lot of people are enjoying for Ultimate Spider-Man. But I just can't see fans really taking it seriously that any character would be able to even tempt Peter to go to the dark side because they were femme fatale or beautiful. That's really just kind of off the table. So I wonder what they're going to do with the character. Like They're going to have to do something because that's just not going to work. And if they did it and they had Peter, you know, maybe uh, make a mistake and, and kiss her or do something even more inappropriate than that, I think people would turn against the character and not, not, not just the character. I think they would turn against the series and the writer. They are playing with fire if they decide to go down that path. Now, she tries to tempt him and he tells her to go bug off. He's got no time for her. That makes complete sense. But then what's the character going to do after that? Is she just doing stuff to make him jealous or to get his attention? I don't know if that really works for a compelling villain. So we shall see with ultimate black cat appears to be race swapped, but still as beautiful as ever, as you would expect. We've got some more information on the ultimate Hulk. Ultimate invasion introduced the gray skinned Hulk as the legendary and immortal leader of the enlightened children of the eternal light, the highest holy man of his pacifist cult, while he's still Bruce Banner, Ultimate Hulk, isn't as zen as he claims. The man monster sits on the Maker's Council of Supervillains that rules the world from the shadows, which frame the teenage Tony Stark's team of superhero freedom fighters as terrorists. The Ultimates will assemble against the Hulk in November's Ultimates number six. And not only that, Hulk is bringing his immortal weapons with him. And we'll get to some of those details there. I do think this is a really interesting take on the Hulk. And like, this is the one thing that's been introduced and kind of teased and, you know, shown kind of in the background that I've been wanting to really explore the most is this weird, you know, Zen like version of Hulk where he's got complete control of who he is and his abilities and all that stuff. And he's basically suppressed Banner and become this really enormous supervillain that's helping the maker like suppress humanity and remove the heroes and kind of control the world from the shadows. I think that's a really interesting take on the Hulk. Obviously, it's not something you would normally see in Marvel Comics, but I think it's an interesting concept that I've actually wanted to see. You know, how does this work? Is he going to end up going to uh, the good side once he meets up with the Ultimate? So this is something that's been kind of sitting in the background. Uh, Most recently introduced, I guess, in Ultimates number three, when they found out that uh, Bruce Banner Hulk was dosing that island with all this gamma radiation. And Iron Lad was hoping to find an entire army of Hulks. And fortunately, he found the ultimate monstrosities, which were taken too far. <laughs> they were t- the idea was just take it too far. Dennis Camp was trying to take like a heavy stance that, you know, 
nuclear testing around islands is bad. It's like, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. You're not exactly towing a line in the sand and say, saying, I will not cross. It's like everyone agrees with that. It's been banned for years. And then like just the way he did it was so funny. Oh, my goodness. I love that review with Jim. One of the best things we've ever done together. But that will all play into what else is coming up with the Immortal Weapons and Hulk. Unlike their Earth-616 counterparts, Chi-wielding warriors and champions of the seven capital cities of heaven who debuted in the pages of Ed Brubaker, Matt Fraction, run of Immortal Iron Fist, the ultimate Immortal Weapons appear to be gamma-mutated versions of characters like Fat Cobra and Tiger's Beautiful Daughter. Hulk's temple looks to be the site of a showdown between the Ultimates and the Immortal Weapons, best showcased in this wraparound cover from Lionel Francis Yu. And you can kind of see that both sides. And I think this might be the first time they get the entire team of ultimates together. Obviously, you have Iron Lad, you got Thor, Giant Man, you got Wasp there. I believe you got She Hulk, America Chavez. There's another one in there that I'm forgetting. I wouldn't check. There are two characters I was forgetting. It was Doctor Doom, which is actually Reed Richards, and then um, Lady Sif as well. So we'll finally get the full lineup of this version of the Ultimates taking on. Hulk and his Immortal Weapons, as much as um, The Ultimates is a bad series, and I think Issue 2 was was really bad, and I think Issue 3 was worse, it almost feels like the type of train wreck that I can't walk away from, because he is doing some really weird outlandish shit in it. doesn't make any sense, and it's not good storytelling, but I do like a good laugh here and there, so I think I'm going to make it up to these issues, and I think I'm going to stick with The Ultimates just as... You know, one of those guilty pleasures. I know it's a terrible book. I don't really like the story being told. I don't think the storytelling from the writer is all that compelling or good. But there's so many stupid ideas in there. I just kind of enjoy it. You know what I mean? I think I'm going to stick around on this thing. And I'll definitely be interested in the Hulk Immortal Weapons versus the full lineup of the Ultimates uh, battle that happens there. And uh, I imagine it's going to be a hot mess and the fallout will be stupid and make no sense whatsoever. But I'll be laughing, and Jim and I can have a really good conversation about it. You can't have that with Ultimate X-Men. There's nothing to laugh about. There's no fun to be had. It's not even an X-Men book. You certainly can't have a good laugh with Ultimate Black Panther. It's just kind of a boring, mundane version of Black Panther that could literally exist in any universe. The only thing that's really changed is uh, Moon Knight is now Khonshu and Ra, and I guess uh, Storm and Killmonger are together, but who cares? Is that really a big enough change? They, they needed to do something cool with Black Panther and the status quo of Wakanda, which feels like it's exactly the same as it always been. So, I don't know. The Ultimate Universe is quickly losing my favor. I'll stick with Ultimate Spider-Man because I like this version of Peter Parker and I like him in a relationship. I just want to see some more action. I would like to see him be Spider-Man a little bit more. And I think I'm going to have to stick with the Ultimates because uh, Dennis Camp might not be a good writer. And his ideas might not be all that compelling, but they are fucking ludicrous. And sometimes that's what you need to keep you interested in a comic book. What the hell is this guy going to do next? So there you got it. The Ultimate Sinister Six debuted implications regarding the Ultimate Black Panther and his daughter. We've got the Ultimate Hulk and the Immortal Weapons coming up with a major battle with the Ultimate soon. I hope you're enjoying the Ultimate Universe more than I am. And if you would like more conversations about all this stuff and geek culture and comic books in general, and you want to support my mission here on YouTube, you like what I'm providing here, you can support me on Think Critical Patreon. And we give you now like 40 extra hours of, of stuff every single month. And it's not just podcasts. You get exclusive videos and reviews there as well. If you haven't checked out Think Critical Patreon, there's a link in the video description.